You are now listening to Out of the Blank. 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 Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Matt Segan. What's going on, man? So, Matt, tell me a little bit about yourself, if you want, what you do professionally, or just whatever you feel like talking about. Yeah, so uh, a little bit about me. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I run Deep Safety Hot Peppers. Uh, dad of three, married to my best friend. Um, we've been together for 11 years now. Three kids, eight, five, and two. One girl, two boys. Um, I was in the Navy a long time ago, from 2003 to 2008. I worked in... Um, Boiler rooms. I was stationed in Yokosuka, Japan, uh, working on the USS Kitty Hawk in the boiler room there. Um, left the Navy, started a family, and now I work as a safety manager in a power plant. Actually, kind of different because we're a waste energy facility. We burn garbage instead of you know your typical natural gas or coal or anything like that. That's crazy that you went from boiler room. It seems like you're sticking around a lot of things hot, even with the hot sauce company. Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of the hot sauce, you know, and the pepper company kind of was a parlay into a, a hobby, you know, into a, making some money now. I sold a lot of peppers last year just locally and trying to grow the company this year, talking to the local hot sauce companies because I don't want to follow the traditional grow your own peppers and make hot sauce. I want to be the supplier to guys so they don't have to worry about that, that kind of aspect and take that away from them and give them, you know, consistent quality hot peppers why did you decide to grow hot peppers though like what, what really sparked my interest which it wasn't really caught of a surprise is when you said um on your page it says veteran um you know like support that system a lot of people that have that are typically one themselves and that's when you said you were in the navy i, I figured you served um yeah 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 um so the way pepper started i mean i guess it's just it's something fun to grow it's something, it's cool to watch something go from seed to this gigantic plant that makes peppers and years back i was only growing two or three of them a year and then fell in love with ghost pepper and carolina reapers um and you know the whole super spicy food thing doing different you know one chip challenges and things like that so last year i did 18 plants um split between habaneros ghost peppers and carolina reapers and this year i'm going up to almost 200 plants um same same type carolina reaper ghost pepper but playing around and trying things like white and purple ghost peppers or a new one the i think it's out of england it's called dragon's breath it's supposed to be hotter than the carolina reaper yeah there's this okay so um shout out to Harmon heat um he sent me devil's dust and it's like grounded up powder that is dragon's breath and i didn't sure. know what that was so i took a giant spoonful like because i thought like oh i eat cayenne pepper and i stuck it in there dude you ever get a pain where it's like you feel like somebody dislocated like one of your molars? Like I was like, I think <laughs> eating that sauce popped or like a wisdom tooth out of place or something. Sure. Yeah, I've had one really bad experience with peppers. And this was like two years ago. There's a local chicken place that um, was doing this, uh, their hottest sauce on the wings. And I'm like, all right, I like spicy food. I'll go give this a shot. Crush the wings. All good. You know, had a beer afterwards and just chilled. Got home an hour later and I had like where my stomach turned into like the, the size of a grape every like 30 minutes and just would not unlock. And it was the most rolling, nasty pains I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I bought a dry roasted, one of those like cooking peppers that you use. It was a ghost pepper or a Carolina Reaper. I don't really remember which one. I think it was a ghost pepper. But um, yeah, they had them in a bag and I bought one from like a, like a, one of those uh, gas stations. It's like a Mexican like uh, kind of run down like kind of like place i guess you would say they have like the restaurant in the back that's kind of hidden away and um so you're looking at everything and you can't read what it is because it's in a different language i can't read spanish so i'm just seeing everything so i just threw up a bunch of stuff on the counter and i ate one of those things raw dude and i felt that thing work its way through my stomach all the way from like my throat to my stomach all the way through my intestine all the way out my asshole it <laughs> hurt so bad dude i was driving oh, yeah. home at one o'clock in the morning feeling like someone threw a a burning coal into my like lower part of my intestine i was like i just want to go home and lie down yes i i can totally relate to that it's some things can just get you and just ruins your entire insides 
Well, that's, that's what is so interesting about it though, how people get so passionate about it. Like, I mean, how did you even decide to really get into the pepper thing? You could have went anywhere. You could have did the easy route with hot sauce, but you went from, you know, like you said, you were doing like 12 plants to doing almost like what we said, almost 200. Yeah. Almost 200 this year. That's like, I tried to grow a tomato plant at one point in my life. And even that was a pain in the ass. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's kind of a labor of love. Like I said, initially this started as a hobby and then you know, if my hobby can make me money, why not chase that down? And it's, it's putting you know, a partnering that with putting out a quality product. Like I know what I'm growing. I know it's organic. I know the spice level. I can talk fluently about it and it builds partnerships. And I mean, in the flip side of everything with the pepper company is I'm a safety professional. It's my job, my day job, whatever you want to call it. So I tie in like a safety messages because my passion truly is, is keeping people safe at work. And so I get to kind of put both of my passions with peppers and safety into a company and, you know, teach people about hazards in the workplace while giving them some bomb pretzels or really good um, peppers to do whatever they want with. Oh, because you soak up more information when you're in a vulnerable state. Like I know when I'm in an extreme amount of pain from something that's super hot, I will give you my car keys. I'll give you my firstborn child. <laughs> I don't care. I just want to be like helped. I want to be left alone. I want to deal right. with this pain on my own. So that's perfect. Like you just burn their mouth with a pretzel. And then that it's something too, like when you're hearing information for the first time, if you're experiencing something that's painful or experiencing something really, really good, it tends to stick into your memory more. So that's pretty good for a safety instruction. Yeah. I mean, I like it. It's, it opens up that conversation because nobody ever really likes the safety guy. Right. You know, especially in construction or heavy industry, you know, the safety guy is there to spy on you and do things. Well, I, I tried to take that, you know, vision away and, you know, build a partnership with guys at my work and show them that safety really does save lives. And these programs are there. They're written in blood, but, you know, make them look past the title, but really look at you as a person. Right. And then just to try to explain to them, we're doing this for a reason. Yeah, I might be auditing you, but I want to make sure, you know, you've got your fall protection on because you're going up 10 feet on the side of a scaffolding or, you know, inside of a boiler or whatever you call it. You know, there's so many different things you can do in a, in a harness, but trying to take away from that, that bad luck from safety guys and, you know, safety world in general and teaching them because I truly believe in it. I know it saves people's lives. I've written programs that have, improve places and it gets better you know really developing a true safety culture safety is an important thing honestly as a kid i was like oh you know screw safety all these types of things but i remember what really got me interested into it especially when doing hvac and working in a shop at my school um just there was a play that i saw uh the monkey's paw i don't know if you ever heard of it um uh -uh. A dude, like uh, th this family was, um, they found a monkey's paw that was like, um, they could wish upon it and the wish would come true, but in a really corrupted, twisted way. And um, the mom was like, I wish we had enough money to pay our bills. And then there was thunder. And the next day, one of the, her sons went to work at a construction facility and got his arm stuck in the machine. And died you know got his arm Jeez. ripped off and everything and then the check that came from that was reimbursement for their son dying was enough to pay off their bills so it was their wish come true but in a terrible way oh, and wow. when i when i saw that i'm like that stuff happens how many times has someone you've heard a story about someone getting their um like my uncle for instance he worked in a um construction facility um a lot around a lot of i guess a around a lot of rotating parts and one day i saw him and he had his whole head shaved i was like what happened to your hair his hair got he had really long surfer hair it got caught in the machine and someone saved his life by cutting off his hair oh wow like you don't even notice these things you get so used to working on the job forever one day you go out without your safety harness hatched next thing you know you fall off a building or you fall off an exit way right you know, these yeah. are important things, but f throughout time, we're like, oh, it's not going to happen to us. Oh, we have enough experience. I've been doing it for 30 years. There can still be that mistake. You know, those people that do the elevator fixing those things, those things freak me out. There's so many things that go into it. I mean, you know, if somebody was to talk to your uncle, like, hey, I think you should put your hair back in a ponytail and do all these things, you know, that pre-job analysis, you know, work task and making sure that he understands, you know, that comp coupled with the like, complacency you talked about. Complacency truly does kill because you walk by something the same time over and over every day for 30 years, you're going to forget it's there. You know, instinctively your body might step around it, but you're going to forget it's there.
Yeah, I mean, even I've, my woodshop teacher that was literally like teaching for 40 something years around like the 25 year mark, he ended up cutting off one of his fingers because he didn't have a guard down on one of the saws. Like yeah. things happen, there's slip ups, there's things that go on. Like the one day you leave your house um, without your seatbelt attached or something, and next thing you know, there's a cop sitting there, even though you've done it so many times and never seen a cop there. Uh, it's an experience too, especially when you want to go to safety, you're working around peppers too. Like, I don't know how many times I've gotten poison ivy and then they're like, don't touch your hand or dick. And next thing I know, I'm getting poison ivy on my eyes or dick. So it's like, oh, dude, yeah, it's the worst thing ever is getting any pepper oil or capsaicin on your dick or in your eyes. It's excruciating. So I've, you know, I handle a lot of them now. So I just, I keep three, four boxes of um, gloves in my house now. Just toss, you know, rubber gloves, toss those on. Cause like my kids like to get involved with, you know, harvesting or drying them or whatever, grinding them up. And I want to get them involved, showing them how it's done. But I'm like, you need to put gloves on or, you know, put a mask on if we're boiling peppers to make sauce or anything like that. What what would you say would be the hardest part of your, just like your whole thing in general? Is it the growing process waiting or is it more of trying to, pick them all and then ground them up. I would say the hardest part is <clears throat> germination, you know, getting the seeds started. Cause I start everything indoors right now. I start everything in January. So, I mean, I live in Michigan. It's not super warm here. I don't have, you know, the best setup right now. So I'm using, you know, nice lights on a shelf in my basement. So I'm controlling, you know, the temperature, but just that painstaking process of making sure that they're watered appropriately, getting, you know, the, the right amount of fertilizer, things like that, and the right nutrients. And, babying them for the next three months until I can get them outside and give them true sun and, you know, let them be themselves out in nature. I've heard a lot of people talk about the methods of growing a plant can truly affect it. Does that same thing with peppers? Like if you roast or you grow them in the sun or, or maybe like what technology we have that those things you can kind of grow them in your house too. Does you think that plays an overall effect into the growing process? Like we talk about dry roasted or something. I'm like, that would make sense that a pepper would be a lot hotter and have more authentic flavor if it was in the sun baking. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can, you know, try to imitate the best you can on the inside you know, and, different lights, you know, different wattages, all of that, you know, different nutrients, but I still think that the peppers grow best outside. That's why I always, you know, try to grow them at a certain pace where I can get them outside for peak season before they start blossoming and um, growing the fruit. That way, you know, mother nature can truly take over and do her magic. What, um, how long does an average process for peppers take to grow? Like what's the length? I know a pineapple, it takes um, 48 months. Yeah, the average life to maturation is roughly 100 to 120 days for super hot. It can be a little bit longer because some of the, you know, like hot, super hotter, hotter than super hots, like Carolina Reapers or Dragon's Breath, they can take up to 30, 30 days just to germinate. So it really is um, a labor of love and painstaking to get it going. But once you get it going, like last year, I was puking peppers. I had so much because I just, was, I play around every year. I'm learning every year and um, mixed potting soil with my own compost it was really um, dialed in on ph and they took off and i was just getting bags and bags every week last year off 18 plants so i'm excited for this year to get even more off of almost 200 plants i feel like um i love the combinations you can mix in with food first of all like i saw something that really interests me was the spicy pretzels that you have first thing mm -hmm. i thought of when i saw that was like imagine going into a bar and replacing those pretzels or snacks that they have at the bar table with those spicy pretzels and watching people freak out. Well, yeah, it's funny. I talked to a couple of um, bartenders and bar owners that I'm fairly friendly with around here and I'm like, Hey, your beer sales will go up. Guys start eating on these, you know, they're going to need two or three more beers than they normally would. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a big question I have. What's um, what are some crazy ideas you thought about using your peppers with food? Like, what do you typically pair them with? I mean, are you, you're not making sauce. You're just growing the peppers and turning them into food. Um, yeah. So right now on the, my only product uh, that I'm making uh, for my peppers is the pretzels. I just infuse that into oil and then infuse that into the pretzels and bake out the oil. Um, and the reason I got into that is because there's no really good spicy snack foods in the area, at least that I know of. And not readily available. If they are, um, they're super hot and they taste like shit. So I talked to my friends and kind of built a recipe. And every time I hang out with them now, they're like, Hey, make sure you bring those. And then I kept doing that and bringing them. They're like, dude, you need to sell these. These are fucking fantastic. Like, okay. So I, you know, jumped into it and threw them on Facebook and sold out my first batch in a weekend. 
Yeah, we consider like, I mean, how many good spicy snacks, like you're saying, that aren't really common? There's not a whole lot out there. I think the best snack I've really ever had that was spicy or something was some spicy sweet chili Doritos. Those are like perfect to pair with the chili. But I mean, there's not a whole lot out there. And pretzels, like everyone wants to talk about the sweet and saltiness of it, but like a spicy kick to it is kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I still haven't found, I do a lot of research every weekend and whatever I can to try and find anything that's like it. And nobody's making a spicy pretzel. I mean, there's, you know, big companies that make like the hot sauce or hot wing style, like hard pretzels, but they're, they're good, but they're not fantastic. And I, this isn't tooting my own horn, but I, all my friends tell me and everybody that keeps buying from me over and over, because I have repeat customers every week now, they're like, there's nothing like this. And these are fantastic, you know, is either something's not spicy and tastes good or super spicy and tastes like shit. And I've been able to make it super spicy and taste good because my biggest selling flavor, I put in brown sugar as well to kind of balance the heat and give a little sweetness. And I can't keep them, you know, keep making enough of them every week right now. Yeah. Have you ever thought about turning this into a full on like company, like where you own your own store, you're in your own farm, or you can kind of cultivate more of these? I mean, do you, have you sold to any, uh, hot sauce makers or in general, or at least chili heads that want to try a hot pepper? So the way I've been doing it right now, this is my, my first like real test year. I'm calling it just because if it, if I reach, um, I have a bunch of milestones, obviously financials and growth and all of that. But if I hit those milestones next year, I'm going to really, um, well, it would go into this winter. Then I would write a true business plan and look at commercializing it and trying to sell to local stores or anything like that. This year, um, I've talked to two different hot sauce companies, and they're going to buy peppers from me once I harvest. So that's going to be the big push, and I think it's going to carry us into next year and try to make this a legitimate snack food company. I have a lot of goals of going to farmer's markets this year and really growing the brand around it. So next year when we go to launch commercially, that um, at least in my community in Grand Rapids, I'll have established the name and it'll recognize that once it starts hitting the shelves. What do you consider at least the information that you've kind of learned with growing peppers in the first place, like tips and stuff? Because, I mean, to be honest, I really want to try farming. I really want to push my hand at it. But I end up missing something like a watering day or if I end up getting caught like somewhere where I'm not going to make it home that night, you know, and then the plant ends up getting neglected or died upon. It's like I worked so hard to try and produce a tomato plant, but just ended up like I ended up going for away for a weekend. And next thing I know, it's just done. Right. So this year, um, like I said, I'm, and every year I've done this, I've grown things in pots and this year I'm going to do drip irrigation and there's apps and things like that, you know, that all back through through your Wi-Fi. So my goal for that is to be able to control it just like I do my thermostat. You know, I have an Ecobee thermostat. I want to be able to control the watering automatically so I can almost set it and forget it. So if I do have to go away for a weekend, I know that it can be watered and taken care of. I think you should definitely try and branch off and create a hot sauce too, man. I mean, you, you oh no, are... I'm I'm definitely making a hot sauce this year. That's just not my main product goal for the year. Your Eventually, main... I do want to make a continual hot sauce, but that's not my big goal for this year. What have you, what ideas have you thought about creating a hot sauce? <clears throat> so my hot sauce is this year. Um, I'm targeting um, trying to partner with a local farmer up in Traverse City, Michigan. Um, Traverse City is really well known for their cherries, and um, to stay true to Michigan, I want to make a Michigan-based hot sauce, peppers grown in Grand Rapids, cherries from Traverse City. And um, my target this year is going to be a Carolina Reaper and Traverse City tart cherry um, sauce, as well as a um, chocolate ghost pepper with melted chocolate bars inside of it and chocolate, um, or excuse me, with the ghost peppers. So it's going to be a little bit sweeter and on that one but definitely hot and i'm not going to put out a product because it, hot sauces once they get to that level you typically lose their flavor and it just kicks your ass hot i don't want it to be that thing that sits in your stomach and makes you shit yourself for the next two days yeah well it's, it's oh. sadly for most of the public it's not that's not a good product for a lot of people a lot of people don't want that thing that's going to send them to feel like they're going to have an ulcer in their stomach and send them to the er right you know like there's very few people like that like me like you know like me going i didn't know what devil's dust was that's a cool ass name i figured it was also like oh it's just a hyped up name but you know my wisdom teeth definitely moved out of place a little bit but yeah. you know, most of the people in the world they want something that has flavor to it with a little bit of heat to it like that's why tabasco yeah. is so popular but if you look at every single hot sauce when it comes to marketing is all about the design it's all about the label but 
Tabasco is so watered down. I don't even consider it hot sauce anymore. Like when I figured out what real hot sauce was, like sriracha is very good because I like the thick taste to it. But I've talked to so many hot sauce developers and creators now, and I've tasted so many. It's like I love the consistency when someone's actually full on working towards it. It seems like we're so used to the main brand stuff because we know it and it's so old and popular, I guess. But it's like they're not the best. They're just around. They're just things that we know and it's familiar and we'll keep buying rather than trying a new sauce because we're afraid of trying something new. Yeah, I think you nailed it. You said, I mean, it's the familiar thing. It's just like everybody goes to the same gas station or, you know, smokes the same cigarettes, drinks the same beer. Everybody likes familiarity in their life. Um, and with peppers gaining a lot of popularity, mostly um, in the late 90s, early 2000s in the UK, um, it really kind of, I think, started from there and then spread across the U.S. and the rest of the world. You know, Sriracha be kind of became the new thing, what, five, six, seven years ago. And people started going after hotter things and in the last couple of years and all these one chip challenges or anything else like that. People are really starting to pay attention to hot peppers because you can make things taste good, even though they're ex extremely spicy. That was always my favorite thing was the food challenges. I mean, what was the TV show back in the day that was so damn popular on Discovery Channel was Man vs. Oh, food. Man. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, like that dude went all out just trying all these right. challenges and people were cheering them on because they want to see a challenge. They want to see people overcome that. They want to support that person too, or they want to cheer and watch the person fail. Like I remember how many times um, when I found out, like I got addicted to that show at one point, but I found out there were food challenges in my area. I was going around trying to find out all these places. Next thing I know, I pop up like, oh, that place closed down three years ago. I'm like, well, what, what the hell? There was like nothing in my area to find anything like, you know, devour this amount of things in this amount of time or do this. I'm like, we, I want to try those because there's people out there that want to try the spiciest stuff. They want to do the, you know, the amazing challenges. They want to get a t-shirt. They want to get their picture on the wall, even if it costs them an ER bill or something, but it's, it's a fun experience. And I think like when we talk about things that are relatable and things that are known, every restaurant you go to, it's Tabasco on the table. It's whatever soy sauce on the table. It's all these things that we're so used to. It's the same company, same brand, because they dominate the market. But I'm like, trying something new is not hard putting a uh, hot sauce or something maybe on a grilled cheese or changing the profile. Like I've just with on willingness, like, you know what? Screw it. If that's five bucks, I don't know what it tastes like. I'm going to try it. And then I end up trying it and I love it. I'm like, Holy crap. Like I would have never, you know, people say like, Oh, well, I like the same thing. I like this. It's like, if you change it up, if you try something new, like, you know, it's not going to hurt. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I've made that mistake too. I've bought that freaking drink LaCroix, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> sucks ass that's expensive so drink too and i'm like i bought that yes. it was a mistake i threw the rest of them out but still it was like i had to learn man like you figure out what you like and what you don't like spicy chocolate that is different and i've seen it done before but it's like not a whole lot of people are doing it so you could capitalize the market on that in general oh yeah so funny you say spicy chocolate i actually you know part of my gig is doing the spicy challenges on my Instagram and posting the videos. I just did one a couple weeks ago, the gummy bear challenge or whatever, but I just got in yesterday. I'm going to do a video tonight of the hot damn bites challenge. It's three different chocolates and everybody I've watched this, they're, they taste great. I mean, obviously they build in levels and they get hotter, but I'm super excited tonight to do that one. And that's, that's interesting too. You know, the show hot ones. Dude, that's like my favorite show. Yes. Yeah. That's, I tell people, instead of doing a lie detector test give someone a carolina reaper or give someone a ghost pepper and then have them answer the yeah. questions because you're not yeah, gonna yeah. lie you're not it's not yeah, gonna happen and it's like the perfect setting like you said it's a perfect setting for an interview and sean evans is like it's the non-typical interviewer he asks like the most amazing questions to those guys and just or guys or girls whatever and just drives a good interview and why you watching those guys just get destroyed by wings? Did you watch the most recent one by with Pete Davidson? I did see that one's a little bit insane. Yeah, that dude got destroyed, but he's a champ and just kept going. I'm like, man, good for you. Paul Rudd was probably the best on that oh, show. Paul Rudd, but absolutely. At, at the ending, he was like, I don't need to promote anything. Just be pe have yeah. fun, be people. Like that was that was amazing. But the funniest one yeah. I think was was Bobby Lee in the beginning. Um, okay, I haven't seen the Bobby Lee one yet. He shit himself. Did he really? Yeah, he's cussing at everybody, screaming at the cameras, and then he's like, he takes a bite, and then he goes, oh, and he leans forward, and all he hears a, in the, and like, it was the weirdest thing, and they're like, no, Sean's like, no, no, and he's like, yeah, 
Yeah. And they had to cut and stop for like a minute. And then they came back and he was like, well, Bobby, I'm sorry we put you through that. And he's like, yeah. And like, it, he's so open. He doesn't care about it. But like, th right. that's crazy experiences too. When you see that happen, but like food challenges, um, uh, Harmon heat that I was telling you about before he put in whiskey, like a hardcore bourbon or something. He put dragon's breath peppers and had it soak in there for two weeks and then drank it like oh, wow. that shit like people love watching people in pain i don't know what it is it's like afv back when people are getting hit in the nuts people just want to see people thriving in pain from trying <laughs> something spicy yeah that's why jackass was so popular You're like oh look at me see what these idiots are going to do now right and I, 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 that's entertaining too like do you would you want to capitalize on the youtube aspect of it too i feel like that would give you a lot of social media attention and get a lot more people to buy your product yeah, I don't know. I mean, social media, I've used it for a long time, but I've never tried to drive it from a business side. So that's something I definitely need to get into is trying to help, you know, grow the brand we were talking about earlier. But, you know, becoming more proficient at using social media, Instagram is only even new to me in the last I don't know, four months or so. So building myself and understanding how that works and how that can benefit the company and getting our ideas and our product out there is definitely something I need to do this year as well. What challenges are you hoping to come up to besides like, you know, you say, I know you said the chocolate thing, but is there anything that you've been kind of wanting to try, but maybe be a little like kind of afraid of it a little bit? Like I know for me, I seen a lot of people eat those, um, like those crazy hot nut peppers or something, or but those look kind of a little bit out of my range. Yeah. I did the, the death nut 2.0 challenge last year, which was a couple of buddies sitting around drinking beers, watching a UFC fight. And that was really good. Um, I was nervous as shit going into that, but the one I've got, I've had it for four months now that scares the shit out of me is the uh toe of satan it's a sucker that you have to have in your mouth for five minutes and every weekend i'm like all right i'll do it this i'll do it saturday and then saturday comes i'm like fuck that i'm not doing it i'll find something else to do for right now it's just like you gotta I watch videos and those guys get destroyed yeah you gotta commit to that man that's like i remember um uh he, somebody was telling me to, to try that devil's dust before i had a full day of podcasting ahead of me and i was like yeah let me ruin my mouth for the rest of the day so i can't talk so i'm in a podcast sitting there drinking water every two words like it does not make any sense but like you literally got to plan that stuff out like i got nothing to do today i took an enema i'm good i'm all cleaned out so i can just eat this pepper and it'll go right through me uh, i i found uh i did a, a hot wing eating challenge at a local brewery I don't know, end of, end of January or whatever it was. And I prepared myself with like a good amount of food and then like three different layers of Pepto because I didn't want my stomach to get destroyed. So I've learned a few things and tips and tricks on how to manage the stomach side of that, you know, the after effects. But, you know, so maybe I'll couple that with the uh, sucker. When I saw Gordon Ramsay uh, chug those bottles of Pepto or do those shots, I was like, what is he doing? And then people are like, why is he putting that on his tongue? And I'm like, oh, it's because he literally functions and makes money off of his taste buds. And he's trying not to burn them and ruin them in any way. I mean, doing a sucker challenge, first of all, that's sitting in your mouth. That's not going to be good for your taste buds. It's definitely going to make you lose a little bit of your taste flavors when it comes to probably the next week or so. You know, it. it <laughs> Those experiences, like I get it. I love the challenge aspect. I mean, you're talking to a guy that put like 32 warheads in his mouth, those sour candies. And I literally ripped up the whole inner lining of my mouth for like a year and a half. I was just like, just because it, it's in your mouth, you're sitting there biting onto it, peeling the skin off and stuff. It's like never healing. But like, it, it was a dumb thing that I did, but it was cool because it felt like I got a sense of accomplishment. Like, let's pull out the measuring uh, rulers and, you know, <laughs> that whole competition status thing. Like same thing with the wing challenge or something. I don't know how in our history we figured out that wings are the ideal food to put hot sauce and like different types of sauces in. I think it's just a good delivery vehicle, right? I mean, who doesn't love a delicious crispy wing? And, you know, you can couple that with a bunch of different hot sauces. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but, I mean, isn't there a better option, like doing, like, a French fry or something? I feel like they're easier to yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, you can do French fries. I like doing um, powdered peppers on French fries. That's always a good time. Yeah. I like, um, especially if we're going to use hot sauce or something, I know people do it on your eggs and I know you kind of are a little bit insane to do ketchup on the eggs, but I get it. Oh, it's, it's don't Canada. get me started again on this freaking ketchup and egg. <laughs> <laughs> you need to just try it. It's dangerous. It looks like, uh, yeah. it, it's, I don't know. I don't play cards with the devil. I would say, unless it's Al Pacino. Right. Well, I think you should try it. First, you should try the ketchup and mac and cheese. And I know some of your listeners might think I'm crazy. I said as Canadian, so it's kind of my part of my culture growing up, but. I really think you should try ketchup and mac and cheese and then get back to me. 
didn't understand the whole ketchup in Canada thing. I didn't know it was that big there. I thought it was a lot of maple syrup and stuff. Definitely maple syrup, but I don't know. Ketchup's just that condiment that every Canadian has lots of, and we put it on everything. I can do ketchup on a salad. That works. On a salad, please explain. It's like, it's, like it's, getting it's, a. It's, yeah, you just get a, a salad, salad and, and putting a yeah. If you don't like on? well, if you don't like dressing or something, you get like a nice leafy like uh, romaine salad or something. Just drizzle a little ketchup on top of that sucker. It's like eating tomatoes in it. I guess I could see that. I've never done that. That's I I never even learned that until I was at a pub one time and we're sitting there eating meals away from the bar or something. And I asked the woman, I was like, "Do you have any dressings?" And she's like, "No, we're all out." And I was like, "What do you mean?" It was like a small little pub during winter time so they don't really stock up a whole lot and i'm like so what can i use and i'm looking around the table and i see mustard and then i see ketchup i'm like well might as well try ketchup it's tomatoes right and i just drizzle it on there next thing i know it was amazing dude i mean i wasn't sober but whatever right it works (laughs) you get to see some um, of the best food is when you're not sober right that's what the pretzels come in handy except that when they're spicy probably you're making them even more like dry mouth See, I've actually, I've, I don't know if I've ruined pretzels for me, but I was eating just a plain, you know, tiny twist pretzel today. I'm like, this is super dry and gross. I think, I don't know, my, if my process makes it just, it's still a dry product, but it, it's got, you know, a little extra oil baked into it and it doesn't give you that dry mouth. It doesn't, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's got the, the heat, it's got a little bit of, from the dry ranch, so it's got a good continuation of flavor and it doesn't dry your mouth. That's perfect, dude. You even capitalized the market. Now you got to get them in the bars now. Have you ever tried spicy know, trail dude, mix? I'm, I've had spicy trail mixes before. Um, my wife was telling me I should get into doing something like that, like, like a Chex mix, you know, for a pub mix to sell. And this is all, you know, with growth and trying to get a commercial license because right now I'm selling under the uh, Michigan Cottage Law. So. You could tell a lot about a person by the Chex mix they eat. You know, everyone's got a typical, I guess, priority in a bag. You know, I like that little potato wafer thing that they have in there. Oh, dude, the brown chips are what do it for me, the rye chips. Yeah, those things are good. Those are my favorite. I'll eat a whole bag of just those. You got to look at the person weird when they're only pulling out like the little rice check squares, those things. You're like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. Psycho, what are you doing? Will you murder some people or something? See, when it comes to... What typical food do you prioritize putting hot sauce on? Since you're from Canada, I know you do ketchup on the eggs and stuff, but that's a typical question I got to ask because I know people do a lot of barbecue, spicy stuff. Um, for me, it's soups. I really like putting hot sauce in soups. Yep, I love soup. Um, big fan. I do um, venison chili every year. Um, I like to go hunting you know, for whitetail and I make stew every time in the winter or I like really like to do um, spicy collard greens too. That's really good. I typically want to, you know, it's winter time and every Sunday we go to my in-laws and have dinner. I know I always bring them over a big pot of collard greens and I'll spice them up for myself because most of the kids and my in-laws and all that don't like the, the spiciness, but I'll make it a little extra for myself and that's fantastic. Yeah. See, I would never understood collard greens until one day I had like a, uh, my friend's I guess dad's roommate uh, is a chef that worked at like this, like five-star restaurant and he made collard greens. And I looked at it, I was like, this smells terrible. And then I had it and I was like, this is fucking good. Salted collard greens. Like your taste bud changed throughout your life. I wish people would understand it. Like so many people are like, I, I don't like that. I never ate it as a kid. I was like, just try it now. Cause I used to hate Mac and cheese and I like it now. I used to hate stuffing and I like it now. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I totally believe in that. I mean, um, my taste buds were just the normal, you know, American diet growing up. And then luckily for me, I got stationed in Japan. I got to travel all over Southeast Asia with the Navy and got to experience like real flavor and seasoning and, you know, outside of cheeseburgers and steak and chili and casseroles, you know, in the Midwest. So it was a really cool experience to go out and like experience a whole new brand of flavors. And like, like we talked about like the beginning though, how did you branch off and just do hot sauce? I mean, from all the safety stuff, like how did you decide just to, not hot sauce, but how did you decide to grow peppers? Like out of everything, do you just get a random advertisement from Google onto your phone saying like, here's what you can No, do? actually it's kind of just a, you know, fun thing to do. My buddies have always liked spicy food and they're like, I went to a greenhouse one day and they were selling ghost pepper plants and I was like, fuck, why not? I've always liked to grow things like I grow blueberries and garlic and other things and said why not peppers you know 
bring them home, grow them, and then figure out what to do with them afterwards is the fun part. So why not? And then it just kind of, like I said, it went from like two or three a year to 18 last year to almost 200 this year. Man, it's interesting too, because you probably pulled out a lot of information talking to a lot of your local farmers too. Oh, for sure. Trying to, you know, learn from them. There's a lot of agriculture in this area. You know, we do apples, you know, from that all the way down to potatoes in certain parts of town talking to people at farmers markets in the past, you know, what, what should I do? And then a lot of online research, you know, what is better for soil content on peppers or, you know, lights they need because I'm doing everything inside. What kind of lights should I have? Things like that. You know, it's such a good resource. And then, you know, sending out, I've actually sent out a lot of my pretzels to some of the bigger names in the chili head industry or, you know, community if you will and just trying to get feedback like is this good you know what do you think about it and getting their feedback because they're much more well versed in flavors and spice and all of that and just trying to learn as i go yeah i know when people do all those like uh they got the spicy um like chips in general that's popular but i mean spicy pretzels is interesting you see a lot of people try different combinations and stuff too i don't know if you ever heard of snapchat but uh oh yeah they have a uh, late night eats you see someone doing hot spicy Cheetos and cream cheese and you see people do like um, they did a Cheeto and a lemon. They did a bunch of stuff and it's just kids just trying out random combinations like freaky stuff back in the day. Like for me back when I was a kid, I remember opening up a bottle of water and putting a bunch of candy in it and then shaking it in there and letting it turn the water into that. You know what I mean? Like that was fun. That was interesting to try and it seems stupid as an adult, but you take those shots as a kid, you might figure out something that works like hot sauce on pizza works. For sure. I don't know. It's so just- I really like to, I do um, grilled chicken thighs and I'll put it, I've got this new uh, ghost pepper and blueberry hot sauce. That's fantastic. That goes perfect with chicken. So I like to grill my fish or something or grill my chicken and put hot sauce on it while it's grilling in the process, like in a pan yeah, or something. It. it bakes right into it, but you got to be careful standing near that. Cause you will start crying a little bit. It starts getting in your eyes and shit. Yeah. I, um, left a couple pepper flakes on my stove top and about killed my wife and kids with all the freaking um, fumes in the air that we all had to leave and turn all the fans on. I was like, oh shit, sorry. Everybody's passing out in the house because everybody's like, we gotta something. get the hell out. It was like, it was like, you know, pepper spray got hit in the house. It was bad. How um much safety do you go in when it comes to your kids being around the peppers? Like you probably have to give them a speech like they're probably used to it now just with the amount Yeah, of I mean, it was eyes. a big concern for my wife with having a two-year-old, you know, and I've just got him in the backyard. She's like, if he fucking touches those, I'm going to kill you. So I, I put up different nettings or whatever and then just explain to them, like, these are super hot. Like, you know, if this isn't like um, a jalapeno. This is really bad and it can hurt you. So my kids are real weary about it. And if I let them handle it, I talked earlier, I make sure they put on rubber gloves with me. If they, like, my daughter really likes to help me grind peppers. So I'll put on, put her in some rubber gloves and then make her cover the top of the mortar. And when she's grinding them up, so she's real careful about it because she knows the dangers that it could really hurt. And I don't want her to get that on her skin and then either, you know, touch her face or anything, part of her body and really hurt, really hurt her. That's really so good of you. Real being careful a- with her about it. That's really good of you being a dad and doing that because my parents were just like, you're going to learn. Like I told you not to touch it. Next thing you know, I'm walking by a light bulb and I look at it and my dad's like, don't touch it, dude. Don't touch it. It's going to hurt. Next thing you know, he looks away or something. I just, he looks away. I just put my finger on it. Next thing you know, I'm screaming and crying. He's like, I told you, I told you, what did you expect? And he's like, you have to learn for yourself. But you know, that's something after I learned the first time, like, you know, you don't, when you touch something spicy, you do that. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch any of that stuff. Cause it starts to burn. I learned it the hard way. Definitely understand a little bit more of it now, but you see those things happen all the time. You see, there was a video on YouTube, a woman, uh, uh, watched her child pick up a jalapeno pepper and bite into it and then sit there and chew it. And she goes, Hmm. And like makes a noise. And then you just see the daughter's face immediately go like, you son of a bitch, you lied to me. Like had that murder face on. Yeah. Like like the dad told her it was a pickle or something. Right. Oh my God. Like that's just savagery. I mean, but you learn that way too. And you have a bigger respect for it as well. But especially like you have a lot of, uh, especially being a safety guy in general, I mean, having small children around that too. It's very, you know, you have to be cautious around it too, because kids are going to do what they want to do, you know, when you're not looking. Oh, for sure. The kids are wild. My two-year-old is a monster. So if I don't keep an eye on him, he's going to grab it and bite it. And then next thing you know, he's freaking burns his mouth and crying. And I just try to avoid that as much as possible. So like this year, when I have all the plants, I'm actually putting up a good size fence section around it to avoid that. 
I do not want that anybody, even my neighbor kids, because I got a lot of neighbor k- kids in my neighborhood that come over and play. Like you just, I don't want you touching that or getting that in your mouth or anywhere near your body. Do you have any problem with wildlife or just weather climates being down there in Michigan? Like just with the amount of the, the environment really changing around in the world today, like it's like 60 degrees one week and then it's 20 degrees the next. Yeah. I mean, the weather's not too bad. I mean, you just have to watch, you know, I don't put anything outside till the last frost, you know, and then a week after that, so like we had frost this morning and hopefully the weather is getting better enough that within the next month and a half, I can get some peppers outside, but then I still keep an eye on the weather because it, a simple frost can just destroy your entire crop. Um, as far as animals, I don't have any issues. I mean, I've had, I think one squirrel that ate like a couple of peppers one year and then never came back. So I'm, you know, I think if they bite into one, like, holy shit, that's not good. So they leave them alone. Yeah, I know um, one time um, I went out to this farm out in like Pittsville. It's kind of like this country kind of spot, a little bit different from the city kind of where I'm used to. We have like a small little city in Ocean City, Maryland. And me and my dad went camping out there. And I remember they had a farm, they had a bunch of horses and stuff. And they were prioritizing bringing the horses in at night and especially not being out through like the, like the berry farm or anything. Not Don't go out there. Don't go out where the crops are at night. And I thought it was weird because it's a moon. It's full moon, man. Like it, it lights up the whole thing. You don't even need lights out there. It's just natural light. So I was like, you know how cool it would be to sneak out? And I remember I, I went out as a kid. Um, I was like 14 or 15 years old. Just we were over there for a weekend or something. And I was running through like the little like bushes and stuff. Dude, there was a fucking coyote. Oh, I man. Yeah, had, those things are fucking mean. Th- that put a respect into me, man, dude. You see one of them. I'm like looking through a tree and you just see this thing start growling at you. And I mean, I'm a kid, dude. I just start backing away. The next thing I know, like I, backing away slowly, I'm not going to outrun a coyote. Um, this guy, Kirk, comes up and just on a, you know, one of those golf cart things and just starts screaming, starts making a lot of noise and thing ran right off. And I was like, that's what I get. You don't want us to be out at night because of that. You know, next thing I you know, I was not leaving the property by myself. Right. Yeah. Gives you a little more respect for nature and what can be out there. Right. Well, it's interesting too. When you're a kid, you're trying to discover stuff too. Like one of the, I think some of the coolest moments in my life is like my grandma taking me berry picking, you know, you could pick out fresh blueberries, like that feeling you probably get just by growing something and you get to pick it and then finally get to turn it into something or be able to eat it. There's a sense of like accomplishment when it comes to it. Yeah, no, it's really good. I, like I said, growing something from seed and seeing a plant get to, you know, two or three feet tall is really cool because you control that whole process. So I really, I mean, that's probably my biggest enjoyment out of peppers is watching it go from this little tiny seed, putting it in soil and taking care of it. And then, you know, in three, four months, you've got this, this giant plant that's giving you this great product that you can turn into something else and couple it with food and and anything else it's really awesome and people get to enjoy it and you get to look at them like yeah you better eat that that. (laughs) that's mine right yeah it's a sense of pride right so yeah well that's a sense of accomplishment too you you pull off something that's pretty difficult i mean growing a pineapple takes so long i don't know how like that's why we plant so many of them it's like goes into with any plant when you see someone like my buddy's mom grows vegetables and stuff in her garden and it takes forever but you know you feel a sense of accomplishment when you're all sitting down having a family meal next thing you know you're eating vegetables that you made like that's some of the best feeling i think that's why it's sparking a lot of interest in people going to farms and doing a little bit more research now like how we used to do back in the day now people want to start knowing where their food's coming from right and i appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast matt i kind of want to give you here a minute at the ending to be able to promote your content be able to promote your page where people can see your awesome work and if you want to promote that youtube out there too yeah for sure um check us out uh, we're both or, uh, only on instagram and facebook right now instagram's at deep safety hot peppers and then deep safety hot peppers you can search us on facebook if you guys have any questions please feel to um, feel free to reach out to me my email's on there my phone number's on there you can call text me um look for us to grow this year like i said we're trying to put out as much quality product as we can and partner with um, some hot sauce growers look for some hot sauce it'd be super small batch probably 100 bottles or less of each recipe um, but those will be available. Um, if anybody from the, uh, any of your listeners are from the Grand Rapids or Western part of Michigan, you'll catch us at farmer's markets in Byron center, Grand Rapids, and possibly on the lake shore. Um, yeah. I appreciate you having me on too. Thanks for listening to this episode of out of the blank podcast and stay tuned for our next episode.